Sketch out your scene and set up your camera. Learn the essentials of blocking and early layout. This video is part of our Unreal Engine full course. Subscribe and check the playlist for more tutorials. In this lesson, I will use basic shapes to create a rough scene outline. I will also use a third person character and I will explain a little about the camera. I have already looked at some concept ideas and have been inspired to create my own scene. A useful tool that I use to organize my reference images is PureRef. You can get this app for free and it will be very handy since you can see all of your references on one board. So generally, I decided to make an abandoned complex near the lake. I have some ideas about what to make and I'll start blocking it out. Here is a look at the final result so we will be on the same page. Let's begin. Inside the levels, make sure that the blocking sublevel is selected. I will now use all of these basic shapes inside this sublevel to lay out my scene. On the other hand, I don't need to set up lighting now. In the lighting section, I will use the nightlight sublevel to have another lighting set. But for now, I'm going to delete it from here. Please note that even if I delete it from here, it will already be in our content folder, so we can return it at any point. This is the advantage of having a sublevel rather than just a folder. Let's hit Ctrl Shift process on the keyboard to save all of them, come back and start laying out our scene. Now that I want to start blocking out my scene, I need human scale as a reference. The unit in the engine is centimeters. So if my grid is 10 by 10, every square is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. I can change the grid size as well, but if I look at my cube is around 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters, so one meter by one meter, you can block out your scene by understanding the proportion like that and scale it accordingly. However, it will be much easier to have a human figure as a scale here to give us some perspective. I will bring another set of assets inside the content drawer for my project. I go to add feature or content pack and add other tools I need for my project. I'm thinking about the third person content here because in this third person content, I can get a human figure character so I can use it as my scale. Let me add it to my project. When I add it to my project, the content browser pops up and we have new items. But let me just close this and come back to my content drawer. If I close everything here and go to the content drawer, I see that I have three new folders, each containing all the assets that I need to make a third person game. We will introduce some of the items in these three folders later, but let's just stick to what we need for now. You can explore them later to see what else is going on. Under character and mannequins and meshes, you'll find some human figures, which we can use as our scale. Okay, I will drag this one into the scene to be my human scale for building out my project. Just hit okay, it doesn't matter. Essentially, since we are putting this new actor in an empty place inside the level, it is giving me this warning. I currently have the figure inside my blocking sublevel, but I need it moved to my main level since I am going to use it later, even after blocking, to check my scene and see how it looks from a human scale point of view. So, I will select the figure and move it to the main level. However, now I'm going to start blocking out my scene. When you want to block out your scene, ensure you are in the blocking sublevel. Let's start blocking out our scene. At this stage, it will be pretty easy. I will use these basic shapes to build three buildings near a lake. I'll just block out my scene accordingly. While working on my scene, I use the copying and pasting technique to move around objects. To make it easier, I also utilize the snapping tool for better rotation. It's just copying and pasting. There's nothing special about it. I'm just trying to come up with an interesting perspective from this point. Also, I will utilize the top view when I'm in wireframe mode to adjust my work you'll notice that I can scale pretty much in any other mode as well. Once we have a rough idea of our design, it is crucial to establish our views. Since we are creating this for cinematic purposes, Having a specific view that we want to work on is essential. It is much easier to establish this from the beginning rather than later on. If we intend to create a game, setting a view is not essential. Now that we are going to develop a view, 
there are several options that we can consider. First, you can select a useful view, and then with Control Plus One, you can bookmark it so that every time you go around, you hit one on your keyboard to return to your view. This is the basic way of doing it, and it's very fast in the sense that you can just hit one on your keyboard and return to this. You can also have multiple views, so hit Control Plus Two on the keyboard to create another bookmark. If I hit one or two, I'll jump between these two views. Since we are making this for cinematic purposes, it might be a good idea to put a camera in it to establish the kind of shot we want. First of all, make sure that you go to the main level. We don't want to put your camera on the blocking level because even after blocking, we will use the camera. From the viewport options, you can create a camera. Make a cinematic camera. And if you create it right now, it will create a camera with the exact view you are looking at. If I go to the outliner, when the camera is selected, you see it in the viewport. If I deselect it by just clicking on anything else, it won't be shown anymore. You can pin the view and the camera here. And then when you are working on other things, you can see how it looks inside your camera. This is very useful, especially when establishing a scene according to your view. If you right click on the camera and pilot it, you can see through its lens and move it to another location. When you exit the camera here, you will be in the same location on the viewport. Another practice you can have is to keep working on your scene and when you want to see what's going on in the camera, you come back here, right click and pilot the camera and see what's going on in the view. Let's talk about some of the options we have in the camera. When the camera is selected, I see many options when I go to the detail window. If you are familiar with any digital camera, it's very easy to navigate. First, one of the important ones is a film back, which shows the camera's sensor. If you want something similar to a digital camera, putting it on a DSLR is better. This setting will change the sensor size, similar to a DSLR camera. Also, all the way down here, you see that the current focal length is kind of crazy because it took it from the viewport we were working on. However, you can change it to whatever you think looks good. Another important setting is the focus setting. This is an eyedropper. You can select something from the scene and it'll automatically set the focus distance. You can also move this number manually to correct it. However, the draw debug cost plan option will help you see where exactly the focus plane, which is very useful. There are so many other options that we can discuss when we put your camera. However, since this is an environment design lesson, we will skip over it and I will explain it in more detail in other courses. So for now, let's just delete the camera and go back to our bookmark. As you can see right now, because we changed the focal length in the camera, we now have another focal length here for our viewport. We can set it back to default by changing the field of view in our viewport option to 90. I will now create a camera from my view with the default settings. I will not change any settings on the camera at this point, but I wanted to show you the options so you can change them if you like. We are currently developing a game engine, which we can use to play this level of the game. We already have a character in the level, and if you're wondering how we can control this character, I will explain how. We added a third person character to our project and brought it to our level. Now, we want to see how we can play the level like a game and gain inspiration as we walk around the scene. When we added the character, we imported three folders into the content folder. In the third person folders, there is a BP underscore third person game mode blueprint that will help us play our character at this level as a third person game. Blueprints in Unreal Engine are a powerful visual scripting system that allows you to create game logic without writing code. They enable you to design gameplay mechanics, character behaviors, and interactions within the game environment visually. For our third person character, the blueprint includes all the logic to control the character, handle animations, and respond to player input. Now, let's look at how we set up our character using blueprints. I go to the world settings window, and you can see that right now, nothing is assigned to the game mode override. This means we don't have a playable character or game logic assigned to this level. To resolve this, we must specify the game mode that includes our character blueprint. 
I can click on none to see all the items that we can assign to this parameter which are inside our project. Also you can search for the item that you are looking to assign here. In this case we want to select BP underscore third person game mode here. You have to note that all of the items that had been showing for use to select are sitting somewhere in our content folder so I can put it back to none. Go to the content folder, select the third person game mode blueprint and then assign it to the game mode override by clicking on the arrow sign here. By the way, selecting an item in the content folder and assigning it to a parameter by clicking on the assign button is a very handy tool that you will use frequently later on. So now that it is assigned, if I hit play form here, the level will go to game mode and I will play a version of our character in this environment like a game. You might ask why this was a female character when the original one was a male, so how can we change it? To exit the game, I just press escape key on the keyboard. I double click on the blueprint to be able to edit it in this window. Inside the blueprint, we see what controls this character. The blueprint consists of the code that enables us to control the character. So, when I go to the viewport, I can see that there is currently a female character here that we can use to play the game. If I want to change the body of our character in the detail window under mesh, I can see that it is assigned to a female character. If I click here, I can find where this character is located. As you see, it is in another folder of my content that I brought in with a third person character. So instead of this female, I'm going to select skm underscore manny underscore simple, which will be male. So when it's selected, I can just come here and assign it to this. And now you see that we have a male character here. Since we made some changes in the blueprint, I will compile my file. Compiling means rewriting the code so that this blueprint runs smoothly. When I compile, I also save it since we have to save any changes to any asset. So now if I close this and play the game again, you see that I'm playing this game with a male character. Let's hit escape key on the keyboard to exit the game. You notice that when you hit the play button, it will start the game from the location of the camera. So if I am somewhere that it is out here and I play this game, you see, because we didn't have any background, it's going to fall down. So let's return, hit escape key and return to our bookmark. I'm going to add a player starter to my scene. This actor will indicate where I'm going to spawn the player when I start the game. Shift so we don't F1. have that problem again. So now wherever I am in the scene, it doesn't matter anymore because when I hit the play button, it will start the game from the location of the player starter. Please note, if you need your mouse cursor when you are in game mode, you can hit shift plus F1. If you hit it inside the viewport, it will disappear again. If you hit the button, you can exit the game. Let's go back to our bookmark. In the outliner, I have these three items that are my helpers and I will put them in a folder and call them helpers. Also, if you want to expand all of the folders in the outliner, you can do it from here and you can collapse your item from here as well. Now that we've established a scene, I will keep working on my blocking. Thank you for participating in this lesson on blocking out a scene and using basic shapes to create a rough layout. We also discussed the use of a third-person character for scale reference and essential camera functionalities. By now, you should understand how to set up a basic scene, organize your content, and establish a camera view for cinematic purposes. In the next lesson, we'll build on this foundation by adding more details to our scene, refining our layout, and introducing advanced techniques to enhance our environment. Remember, mastering Unreal Engine requires practice and experimentation